You know, humans are tribal animals. Humans are very, very tribal. It seems to be hardwired into us. And here says Jesus, Mark 9, 38 to 41, here is where following a crucified Messiah ought to be impacting our tribalism, even as the people of God. Teacher said, John, John again, bless him, poor old John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. We told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. That's the first thing. Second thing. For whoever is not against us is for us. What? Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. What, 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 what is this about? See, what's just happened in verses 14 to 29 is uh, the disciples have failed to cast a demon out of a little boy. Do you remember that ministry failure? Back there, verses 14 following. And Jesus keeps pointing them to their not exercising faith as the key to the problem. Why they've had this ministry failure. And now, John says, we saw someone doing it in your name. We told him to stop because he's not one of us. Does that ring true? In Wales we put it like this, the translation would go, do we know him? <laughs> yeah. Is he one of us? We stopped him. What did this person who was actually driving out demons in Jesus' name, better than these 12 he had earlier managed, what awful thing had he done to lose his license to wrestle the forces of darkness, to push forward the kingdom of God? Here it is. He was not one of us. Do you know who's, notice who's speaking up at this time? For a change, uniquely in this gospel, the spokesman is not Peter. Still smarting from his rebuke in chapter 8? But this time it is the Apostle John. A rare slip-up from John, it appears, who would come to be known as the Apostle of Love. There's hope it is possible to get the point. Jesus speaks out very clearly against this banning those who are doing his work in his name. Teacher said, John, we saw someone driving out demons. We told him to stop because he wasn't one of us. Here comes the ban on tribalism in chapter 9, verse 39a. Do not stop him, Jesus said, because there's a reason. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Two reasons for it. Firstly, says Jesus, blasphemers do not do my miracles. Verse 39b. Secondly, there is no neutrality in the kingdom of God. Verses 40 to 41. How does that work out? This guy's fruits tend to suggest he may not be quite so much not one of us. That is the thing to be looking at, says Jesus. Firstly, is there reality about this person's ministry? Is it bearing fruit? We know the person was casting out demons in Jesus' name. John already gave us that detail in verse 38. And as this person does so, God actively at work comes to be seen. Now look, blasphemers, says Jesus, don't do my miracles. They don't perform acts of human spiritual liberation in my name because I don't work with them. Does that make sense? We look for accreditation for God's servants in all sorts of areas, areas that are really not this one. Has he done the course? Has he got the bit of paper? Can he wear the funny clothing? Well, of course we don't, we don't go for those things because we, we, we are evangelicals, aren't we? And this, you know, we're far too sophisticated. Let's try again. We look for popularity as expressed in large congregational size. Jesus isn't mentioning that. He's saying, is he doing the work in my name? Actually, how often are those large congregations gathered for lots of other reasons other than the preaching? It's not the preaching they're there for. 
It's not the guy up the front. Or maybe we look for oratorical skill. For entertainment value. That's, that's a popular one, of course. But evidence of liberating ministry is a rare consideration, isn't it? Now, let's be honest, the last few weeks have been challenging ones in, in our work, in our ministry, in our life as a church. There it is. Our numbers here have been horrid for some time. Thank heaven the angels are not looking for counting how many bums on seats we've got. But two things happened to me this week to encourage me, I think, and I'm going to tell you them and they're to share with you. In the first place, last Monday, a person present at Capel Dewey in the evening before, Sunday evening, Last Monday I got an email from a person to describe how the Lord had spoken to her clearly through the ministry. That doesn't happen often, but there was a testimony to God helping and liberating. See what I mean? Isn't that lovely? Don't all go back home now and compose an email, right? That's not the point of this. The point is, isn't that that's unexpected, out of the blue, that's great. And then I got an email. Uh, on Tuesday, a young minister elsewhere, I don't know, he tweeted to say how he'd been helped by the video extract he'd seen from here Sunday morning on YouTube. Now, I didn't feel it necessary to describe to him how many people were present here last Sunday morning. I didn't feel that was irrelevant. Because God had helped him as the word was opened up. The point is this, what is the mark of authenticity, John, that you should be looking for? Not whether this person utters our shibboleths, runs with our tribe, but whether the things he does, in Christ's name, sets souls free. Blasphemers do not do his miracles. And in his name, that is. You get that. But then there's no, tr no neutrality either in the kingdom of God, verses 40 to 41. Jesus appears in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, preaching the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the good news. You notice that there is no try in the kingdom of God. Believe and repent, or believe and repent not. There is no try. Where are you? If someone's out there acting in faith, trusting the truth found in Jesus, doing so with acts of spiritual liberation following on behind them, then that person's with you and certainly not against you. There is no try, there is no halfway. It's time to stop behaving otherwise. And Jesus says the very smallest contribution to the service of the kingdom of God, even giving a cup of clean water to its servants, is not going to escape God's reward. Don't shut them out with your tribalism. Count them in. Now here's something we need to crucify in ourselves to follow a crucified Messiah. To walk in the way of the cross behind him as he goes along. <coughs> we need to put to death not the truth because the truth is dealt with here. It's in his name this is happening. We need to put to death not the truth, but to crucify our spiritual tribalism. With one bound, Jesus deals with the denominational licensing of preachers. And he says, don't do it. How about that? 